as genomics has become increasingly commoditized, the problems have shifted increasingly to the contextualization of this kind of analysis. If I want to understand the spread of an infectious disease, I need to know where people live and work, how they get to work from where they live, where they get food, where their children go to school, who they're in contact with, who else's children go to school there. And all of a sudden, I'm talking about things that don't have anything obvious to do with flu as a virus. A lot of what I have to do isn't give you a vaccination or understand the biochemistry of the disease, it's to have an effect on your behavior. The challenge is that these models need a fair amount of data to drive them. And that's where the big data and high performance computing comes in. As we embed human behavior into our simulations, we're able to understand the role that it plays and better equip populations to respond to the outbreak in their midst. When the user goes into the application, they can drill down on geographical areas and see, okay, Indiana is a hotbed of flu right now. And they can drill down and say, Marion County is a hotbed of flu right now. And then this block group is especially high inside of Marion County. In 1995, the first bacterial genome was sequenced. Now we have 50,000 genomes. So how does anyone make sense of it? You have to provide researchers with links and tools, first of all, to be able to find data that they're interested in, but also to be able to interpret that data. Working with a company like Persistent Systems offers us this integral link from conceptual development, from the realization of theoretical principles into genuine practice, into the world of products and markets. Using the graphical user interface that uh, Persistence has helped develop has made my life a lot easier. It used to take us weeks to just run maybe 10 simple simulations I can now do in an afternoon. When we're talking millions and millions of rows, the fact that we can query that quickly and uh, restore it on a web interface uh, for a user to drill down, that, that's, I don't know, pretty impressive. The synthetic data system never stops changing. So this is a complete change in how we think about it, and it creates a very, very difficult problem that our applications have to deal with, and that is provenance. That is, when we have a piece of information, data, that we use for a study, that we use to make a decision with, we have to know what the data set was that was used to generate it or the basic elements of repeatability in science cannot possibly be supported. When we bring persistent teams in as part of our actual research development team, the form that the products are delivered in are prepared for productization. Persistent has been helping us take our software systems, which are oftentimes research codes, down to a stage, breathing life into them in a form that can be then be made closer to products and be put out in the society for a broader use. Persistent has brought our research to life. They have helped us take a step in which the research really is translational. Persistent is really a part of our team. It's an extended part of our family. Thank you.